back to the Tackling Basketball Podcast, everyone. My name is Evan. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Micah. Return from the dead. Welcome yes, back, Micah. Yes. <laughs> Good to have you back. Good to be back. We have a very uh, busy agenda this week, but exciting talking about NFL playoff predictions because only four weeks left in the NFL season coming down to the wire here and yet in both conferences wide open across the board. Yes, NBA insane. power rankings, trivia match for the week, all the good stuff, but... We're going to jump right into it because we're really trying to get to these Monday Night Football games and get through this quickly. Uh, So, Micah, over to you for your toast of the week. Man, as much as it pains me, (laughs) I got to toast the Lakers. Uh, Not only did they just win the inaugural in-season tournament, uh, but they've just been looking so good recently. Uh, LeBron looks like he, how he was playing like 10 years ago, like Every year for the last five years, we've so been like, scary. ah, he's getting old. He's got to start depleting. And every year it's like, ha, nope, I'm going to play less games, but the games I do play are still going to be insane. Uh, Anthony Davis has been really good defensively and showed out in that uh, finals. Reeves and Dela have been doing exactly what they need. Same with Reddish. Jared Vanderbilt should be coming back soon, and he'll be a huge defensive factor. Like, if, like all teams, if they stay healthy, like... They're, they're looking real good. They can actually do something this year, which I was not expecting at the start. So, yeah. good for them. I, I was expecting it more at the start, but then they really sort of fell off at the start of the season. Yeah. And I think the tournament, they clawed their way back. I'm a little disappointed that the first team to ever win the in-season tournament will be the Lakers because yeah. they already, like brag way too often about bygone eras and now this will forever be <laughs> we won the first ever who were the yeah i like the tournament i don't like that they're putting a banner up for it yeah i mean I, I, i'm okay with it if the banner is like smaller yeah. and not as prominent like if it's, yeah. just, it's like gonna if, be bigger if, if it's like the same size as like because the blazers have a motive because the blazers are just desperate to have something hanging in the raptors yeah. where they're like division winners this year like if it's that size and not world champion size that's fine. But yeah, yeah, if they make it the same size, it's like, you guys already have 18 championship banners. Like, right. calm <laughs> down. Like, if, if the Pacers had won it, put that shit up, baby. <laughs> I hope the banner has that, like, really ugly two-tone color with, like, one prominent color in the middle and two awful colors on the sides <laughs> like the courts were. I think that's how they should so do it. so funny. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> they should just be blatantly disrespectful and make it Clippers colors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jonathan, over to you. Yeah, so you just mentioned how wide open the NFL playoffs are right now. Um, and the Bengals, even with Joe Burrow out, even after losing, no, Joe Shiesty. Uh, <laughs> they lost three games straight. Granted, to pretty tough opponents, um, at least for their makeup. Um, but they clawed back. And they've put themselves back into the playoff picture with Jake Browning as their starting quarterback. With back-to-back wins now against the Jaguars and the Colts, uh, they now sit at what is uh, sort of technically the 10 seed in the AFC, except they are one game removed from the 3 seed. I mean, the, the playoffs are crazy right now, everybody. It's a gap of one game from 3 all the way down to 11. And... It is going to be an absolute fist fight to the end, and the fact that the Bengals stand any chance at it after the way they started their season and after the injury to Burrow is nothing shy of incredible. So, Joe Burrow's a system quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> he but is like, a system. Legit though, Jake Browning <laughs> might be the new Brock Purdy. Like coming in at the very end of the season, just has a lot of fantastic weapons around him. Has a coach that just knows how to make the game work with a decent quarterback. I don't think he's as good as Brock Purdy because Brock Purdy has been showing out, but like very similar situation to the 49ers at the end of last season. So, I mean, I, I sort of expected like if the Bengals stood a chance in that game, it would be a low scoring affair and they won 34 to 31 against the Jaguars. Yeah. So like they, their offense is not lacking because no. of him. No, no, <laughs> he's, he's making it work. Yeah. It's been really excited because I picked him up in fantasy because my team was just depleted with injuries and bye weeks, I was like, well, I need someone to hopefully get me like 10 points maybe. And then the last two games, he's just been showing now. It's like, all right, I guess I have an asset oh, for the future. You, this and I were, like, you and I were in similar positions this week because you had your two backup quarterbacks perform better than what Russ and Josh Allen. Yeah. And uh, 
Mitchell Trubisky <laughs> and Zach Wilson will likely outscore Tua. And oh, I guess I didn't have a second quarterback this week, but I should have started Trubisky <laughs> and Zach Wilson this week. Who would have freaking guessed? Yeah. <laughs> Fantasy's wild. All right, for my toast of the week, I'm going to Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, and it's not just because they signed Shohei Otani, which congrats to them. That's perennial talent. You're going to sell so many jerseys and tickets now. Oh, yeah. Way to go. They've already made back their $700 million. <laughs> See, that's, this is the funny thing, though. So the contract details came out today. I was giving the Dodgers crap because it's, okay, 10 years, $700 million, it's $70 million a year. You're donating a third of your yearly team salary to one player. Like, that screws you over from winning games. The Dodgers structured his contract to where $680 million of it is being deferred till a decade later. So they are paying Shohei Otani $2 million a year for the next decade and then paying him the rest in a lump sum once his contract is concluded. What? So the Dodgers are only taking a $2 million salary cap hit each year for the next decade. So how... Wait, how does the... um, (laughs) Do they then have zero cap at all in a decade? Or... No, no, no. So the year that they pay him the lump sum, oh, they're paying luxury tax out the ass. Then. Okay. But until then, he isn't screwing over the luxury tax. He isn't taking away anything. Shohei Otani agreed to just be paid at the very end of his career, which honestly, genius move on his part huh. because he wants to compete. Yeah. And he wants to get paid. He's guaranteed. It's all guaranteed. He's getting huh. his $700 million. It's just he's... Not getting it for a little while, which to be fair, I think he's already made like two hundred million from playing with the Angels. So like, it's not yeah, like he's not like for he's money. For cash. <laughs> but also, the fact that the Dodgers made that work and like convinced Shohei's agent that that was a smart move is wild. Like that sounds like something that somebody who was high came up with <laughs> and was like, "Let's try it." And Shohei was somehow just like. That's a genius idea. Yeah, <laughs> and, now the Do- and now the Dodgers are just sitting there in an office smoking pot like, I can't believe he's here. <laughs> but huge win for the Dodgers. Like, in a decade, yeah. Financially, they are going to be so screwed. <laughs> yeah, because they have to pay all of that luxury tax. Yeah, unless, I mean, you, can, re- you yeah. can restructure it to where, like, you can get payments out each year and you okay. can divvy that up. Okay. But currently, yes, as it sits, in 10 years, the Dodgers are cutting a $680 million check to Shohei Otani. Also, the only incentive <laughs> that they can give him to restructure, because the restructure has to be mutual, is we increase the total amount that we're paying you. Yeah. So, yeah. he's either getting $690 some million dollars <laughs> in a decade, or he is getting more than that over the subsequent decade. <laughs> yeah, so it's... Genius move by the Dodgers, honestly. I will say the only negative here is that this likely will have pretty negative impacts for the fans financially. I think this is going to make Dodger Stadium. Dodger Stadium was already one of the most expensive ballparks to attend in the league because it's in Hollywood, like literally in the Hollywood Hills. I think this is going to make it even worse. Like, they are going to have to figure out a way to pay him somehow, and that somehow is going to be through increasing jersey prices, increasing concession prices. Your beers are going to be $25 now. So, But if you're living in Hollywood, you probably got the money. So, or congrats. the owner is going to sell in nine years. <laughs> They're just going to announce bankruptcy. Well, but that's like, ah, we can't pay you. But that's the thing for the Dodgers. They're a massive ownership group. So uh, when it comes to finances, they're, they're fine. But yeah. Props to the Dodgers. Set them up very well. Um, I am now absolutely terrified of the Dodgers for the next decade as a Mets fan um, because of these three effers in the photo right here. Freddie Freeman (laughs) and Shohei and Mookie Betts. Oh, man, it makes me want to (laughs) cry. But congrats to the Dodgers. Yeah. All right. Enough feel-good stuff. Micah, who you roasting? Yeah. I was like racking my brains on who to roast this week. I was like, ah, I don't know what to do. Like, nothing was really popping out. And then I thought about it, and I was like, wait a minute. Went back through our, like, previous episode notes. I was like, man, we haven't roasted the Pistons yet for what they're doing. <laughs> that just yep. feels wrong. They're on a 19-game losing streak right now. Uh, they're currently playing the Pacers, and... 
Let me guess. Losing. losing. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Look at that. They're losing. So. No win November. <laughs> Did no win November. Have it won since uh, October 28th. <laughs> The Texas Rangers have won more recently than the Pistons have. <laughs> yeah, that one's a lot of fun. <laughs> Which is just... Uh, they're so bad. The other one, I don't know if you have the stat. If so, I'm sorry for taking it no, from go, you. No, go for it. Um, the, in 2023, the Pistons have played roughly 71 games, I think. The Lions have played, I think, 13. <laughs> the and the Lions have, have more wins. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, someone, someone needs to look into, like, if there was some seismic event that happened in Detroit, though. Because roughly around the same time that the Pistons stopped winning, granted, they only have, like, three wins on the season. Like, when they started going on this losing streak, the Detroit Lions kind of started going slightly on the downturn as well. Mm. So, like, Detroit yeah. is just in shambles right now, essentially. <laughs> yeah, the Pistons are weird. They, in their, like, starting lineup... Cade Cunningham is really the only guy who can shoot. Uh, mm. Bogdanovich just came back. He's been injured. Yeah. So that will help them, and he can shoot. But, like, what Hayes is not guy, a shooter. Jaden Ivey. Jaden Ivey can't shoot. Stewart can't <laughs> shoot. Thompson is a rookie who can't really shoot yet. Yeah. Like, they're, they're so This bad. is the hardest tank job in NBA history without even meaning to tank. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, they haven't, like, traded away a lot of assets to try and get worse. They're just that bad they're just that bad they are an example like they are the best argument against a draft lottery yeah because like draft lottery is designed around like anti-tanking we don't want you to like fake losing in order to get better draft picks but the Pistons are just that bad, <laughs> and they need multiple first overall picks if they are. They got, and they're not getting lucky. They got shafted <laughs> so hard this past year in the it's lottery so bad yeah and I mean like I like Cade Cunningham he's good that's their only bright spot. Well, and, yeah. and arguably, like, unless Cade steps it up, I'm not sure Cade is, like, the guy you want to build around as, like, your number one guy for a franchise. He's probably going to be a solid number two or number oh, three yeah. someday, but not the number one guy. <laughs> Sorry, it's raining in here. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, yeah, I agree with you. He, he There's a chance that he develops into a guy that is your cornerstone. And I think there's an equal or even slightly better chance that he is an amazing support player. Yeah. Like a great number two. But they, they're they still searching for their number one. Yeah. Well, and the tough part is is that they're sucking so hard this year. Theoretically, they'll have the best odds for the number one overall pick. This next year, from what I understand, might be like one of the worst draft classes we have seen in a recent Pretty memory. Yeah. So they may not even have like reinforcements coming this <laughs> next season. So. Yeah. It's one of those draft classes, it sounds like, that is going to be really weak, especially at the top, which is where they're yeah, hoping to be. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's where, where they, they should be. be. Yeah. They're not like the Thunder, where they just have a ton of firsts at the end of the first round, which is perfect for the Thunder. The Pistons mm-hmm. have one pick in the first. And the it's Thunder gonna be... have a bunch of picks everywhere, yeah. forever. <laughs> yeah. And yet, they're still one of the best teams in the West. It's so scary. Yeah, it's <laughs> incredible. <laughs> yeah. All right. Jonathan, over to you for your roast. Uh, yeah, it's got to be a team that has really done their best to take themselves out of this massive playoff picture in the AFC. The Broncos? Uh, <laughs> no, they've, dude, they've dug their way back. They're my honorable mention for the week, yeah. but we'll get back to that later. Um, the Pittsburgh Steelers have had an atrocious last two weeks. Last four, if you uh, if you don't count their win against Jake Browning Bengals. Um, they lost to the Browns, the Bang, uh, they beat the Bengals, they lost to the Cardinals, and then they lost to the Patriots. Mm. They had a stranglehold on playoffs, and even they were like top of the division for a while there, and now they are in the rest of the pack with the seven and six teams, hoping to stay in against, uh, four teams upcoming are Colts, Bengals, Seahawks, Ravens. There's a chance they lose out, and a even greater chance that they just lose enough of those games that they are on the outside looking in. Yeah. And with the way that they started this year, um, now I I would say, and you guys have been watching power rankings. I was always lower on them, at probably too much so, given how high they rose. I would have always said that they were overachieving, but 
to fall this far from overachieving is underachieving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is a tragedy. And they, I, like, you look at their team and it's like they almost need to start considering blowing it up. But who do they get rid of, you know? Najee Harris, because running backs don't last long. I think that's a good uh, guy to look at getting rid of. Maybe Deontay Johnson, but he's not going to get you much. They don't have many tradable assets. They're not going to have good draft capital. And I think that we sort of see a slow decline for them, a la Titans of the last couple of years. What I think the Steelers need to do is they should trade TJ Watt to the Green Bay Packers. (laughs) For a third round pick. <laughs> no, but that, when you talk about TJ trade, yeah, no, trade, trade asset wise, TJ Watt is probably the guy you yeah. want to trade away if you're the Steelers. Because, like, you will get. But that one hurts. That one hurts a lot because <laughs> of how much he means to Pittsburgh. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, he's getting into his late 20s now. And, like, with how hard that dude played, we saw it from JJ Watt. Like, you hit those, you hit your 30s and just. No matter how tough you are, it catches up with you. Yeah. Like it happened to Gronk, it happened to JJ. Like your body just goes, "Yeah, you've been running full speed at other human beings for a decade, and sorry, you can't take it anymore." Right. <laughs> so, I would trade TJ. You are going to get probably a couple, two, three first round picks out of TJ Watt. Probably two I, firsts and a second. Yeah, you'd get a you get a yeah. NFL's ransom for TJ Watt. Yeah. And it's uh, definitely something they need to consider. Like you hate to lose a guy like that who's been your franchise cornerstone, the guy that you want to retire with you and you want to hopefully like make it to the top with you, but it's certainly time to start considering that. Yeah. Can't imagine what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just hope that Pittsburgh isn't stupid enough to fire Mike Tomlin. Because this is not Mike Tomlin's fault. Yeah. He is a phenomenal head coach. Yeah. And the offensive coordinator he had, the position he's been put in by the general manager has just not set him up for success. I've seen a bunch of Steelers fans trying to get him fired for some reason. And it's like, you have a top five coach in the NFL. Right. What are you doing? Like, you cannot replace Mike Tomlin. Yeah. So I just hope Mike Tomlin doesn't suffer for this. Like, it should be those wide receivers, besides George Pickens, keep him. Yeah. The defense, Kenny Pickett, you may just need to call it on him. But, yeah. All right. For my roast, I'm going to start out with my honorable mention roast. Uh, Kadarius Tony. Oh. Um, <laughs> Kadarius Tony is an... Is an uh, <laughs> It's been a minute. I, I need to consider that for next time I do this. Okay, just one. <laughs> Give it I, I said consider it for next time. I can't do it this week. Uh, Kadarius Tony is an obvious honorable mention. Um, he has the most drops of any wide receiver in the NFL. Um, and then the whole thing yesterday was Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid saying like, oh, we've never seen offensive offsides called during a game. Like, what the heck is that? And it's simply because it takes a special kind of stupid – to line up offsides as an right. offensive wide receiver. And Kadarius Tony just happens to have that special kind of stupid that allows it to happen. Because <laughs> the beautiful thing about being a wide receiver is that it requires sight to see and catch a football. The wonderful thing is you can also use that sight to look at the hash marks on a football field and go, oh, that's the 45-yard line. The ball is one, two hash marks back from the 45-yard line. And my feet, yeah. that's the 45. My foot is one hash mark back. Oh, I probably need to back up, <laughs> especially when you're standing 20 feet away from the football. <laughs> right. I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, he's right. They don't call it very often, but they can't not call it when no, you are that. The line judge literally, like, the line judge put out a statement and said, I couldn't see the football because he was so offside. <laughs> yeah. Like, we are going to call that. <laughs> but yeah, Kadarius Tony is an idiot. If the Chiefs' wide receiver room wasn't such so abysmal, they would cut him. Like he's been that bad. But yeah. enough about Kadarius. Instead, to a temper tantrum, Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's kind of three things that like I hated about him from the end of the last game. First was the little freaking bitch fit that he threw on the sideline, like mm-hmm. yelling and cussing out the ref. Players literally having to hold him back. Like, dude, come on. Grow, right. grow up. And I, I'll i give him a slight pass for the fact that he hadn't – He, there's no way he could have seen a replay of the penalty at that point. So, for all he knew, it could have been like a he was barely over sort of thing. Like, why are you calling it? Still doesn't excuse the absolute crazy temper that he had. But, eh, okay. Yeah. 
what really pissed me off was first his interaction with Josh Allen, where like the rule of thumb with quarterbacks meeting after a game is like respect. Like you come up and say, "Hey, good game, man!" Like you played great. Like if you're a losing quarterback, you might say, "Hey, you know, we'll get you next time," something like that. Patrick Mahomes comes up, shakes Josh Allen's hand, and it was like, I can't believe they called that. Like, that's such a BS call. And Josh Allen is just sitting, like, the look on his face, he's just sitting there like, dude, I just want to go to the locker room. Like, I'm just trying to shake your hand and get out of here. And Did he Patrick, say that? Yeah, no, he came up, and he's like, that's such a BS call, man. I, I've never seen them throw that flag before. I can't believe they called that. And he walked away from Josh Allen. That's all I said. Huh. Horrible look. Like, yeah. that's just ridiculous and inexcusable. I kind of thought that he would just go to the locker room, and so at first I kind of like almost wanted to give him slight props for coming out and shaking his hand, but no, he should have just gone to the locker yeah, room. That would no, have been better. No, he <laughs> shook Josh Allen's hand and said that, and then he went to the locker room, which is yeah. ten times worse. Right. But then the press conference was the worst thing, because by then he had to have seen the penalty. Like, someone would have come up with a tablet saying, like, this is where Kadarius was lined up, or he would have actively sought out one of the coaches and said, let me see that. Yeah. And he still gets to the press conference and complains about the refs. And his, like, whole entire argument boiled down to two things. One, which is just, I don't understand this at all. He was like, I can't believe you would call that penalty and take away a great play from a Hall of Fame player in Travis Kelsey, and you're destroying his legacy by f by calling that penalty and like not allowing that to be part of his legacy. And it's like, Fair. and it's like, it's like, dude, Travis Kelsey's legacy is already that he is one of the greatest tight ends of all time. Like, I and think he's dating Taylor yeah, Swift. Like I, I think he's fine. And also, if refs called penalties based on legacy. Like, Stefan Gilmore... Like would, in the NBA? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan Gilmore would never yeah. be flagged for pass interference. Like, it's, yeah. that's such a stupid argument. And then the second was, he was saying, like, oh, we usually get a warning about that sort of stuff before it's called. And it's like, what? <laughs> like, like, if a defensive player lines up offsides, they don't get a warning. The ref doesn't come up and say, hey, man, you were a little over that time. You need to make sure you back up, otherwise I'm going to start flagging you. No, they get flagged. Yeah. If a offensive lineman is grabbing somebody by the pads, like right up on their neck, the ref doesn't come up and say, hey, stop that, or else I'm going to flag you for holding. No, they get flagged. You don't get warnings. Like, the ref owes you nothing. If you're offsides, you're offsides. You get flagged. And especially when you look at the video, Canarius Tony, it's not like it was some soccer VAR thing where, like, his pinky toe was past the player. He was like a full yard offsides. Like him and Von Miller were standing pretty close to each other, and legit the sideline cam had their helmets even. <laughs> like, he was ridiculously offsides. So it just this whole fit that Patrick Mahomes threw his entire press conference, the thing with Josh Allen, it's just so immature and makes him look horrible. And I was like starting to like Patrick Mahomes because after the Packers game. He came out and he was like, penalties don't decide games. <laughs> right? Which is ironic. But he said, no, the pass interference, he's like, he's like, we should have played better up to that point. And then this happens and it's like, nope, you're a bitch. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, Patrick Mahomes, screw you, bud. Like, <laughs> I will say, some refs do do the homie thing of if you are lined up off sides, they will shout out to you and tell you yeah. that. They'll throw the flag. They won't, like, give you a free pass that play. But that's some homie refs, and you can't rely on that. You have, as a wide receiver, it's the first thing you check when you get into your position. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then obviously where Kadarius Tony, he was essentially lined up like middle of the field. Again, the ref isn't going to yell out to you from thirty yards away saying "back up," <laughs> and you can't check with him. You simply look at the football, look what hash mark it's on, look at your feet. And there you go. Like, it's <laughs> it's not a difficult concept. So, yeah. it's – Kadarius Tony was offsides. Like, anyone trying to argue that the Chiefs got robbed there is just stupid and ridiculous. And Patrick Mahomes is leading the pack there. Yeah. And the beautiful thing that I see – I don't know if I've ever seen the football community as a whole just completely agree that that was, in fact, a penalty. <laughs> so pretty much everyone I've seen on Twitter was like, yeah, Patrick Mahomes is an idiot. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, you heard the live broadcast. Uh, they were like – you hate to see a game decided on a call like that, but you can't not. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like, yes, for football, it does suck. It would be so cool if that Travis Kelsey moment was legit because, damn, that was awesome. Yeah. But also, like, 
If I'm Patrick Mahomes, screw yelling at the ref or the reporters. Gross. You, you yeah, get into the locker Tony. room, and I personally would kill Kadarius Tony. Like, <laughs> like, it's the second you, game he's crossed them. Well, and then the other thing with Tony, too, is that not only did he do that, but on that same play, he was actually wide open when Patrick Mahomes threw to Kelsey. And you don't see it in most of the clips, but there's a camera angle of him where as soon as Mahomes throws it to Kelsey, Kadarius Tony like, got upset on the field. He, like, clapped his hands and was pissed off that he didn't get the ball. And then Kelsey throws it to him, he scores a touchdown, and he starts celebrating. And it's like, screw Kadarius Tony. <laughs> um, that reminded me, quick honorable roast is for Jerry Judy, who last week after the game complained a lot about not seeing enough targets. And... He's the he most got this on the team. He in this game, they responded by giving him three huge passes. All three hit him in the hands, and all three hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> One of them would have been a touchdown. Two of them would have been like fifty plus yard gains. So, jeez. <laughs> we uh, we no longer will honor your requests for more <laughs> touches. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> Don't ask. <laughs> All right, I ranted long enough about Patrick Mahomes. I'm wasting valuable time. <laughs> we'll move on to matchup of the week. And, uh, Micah, I'll kick it over to you. Why is Bucks versus Pacers our matchup of the week? Well, because <laughs> it's a rematch from the semifinals of mm-hmm. the in-season tournament. And, more importantly, the Bucks after that game, Giannis made a lot of comments in, his, in the uh, press conference afterwards of... We should not have lost that game. We are not playing as well as we should. We have such a good team, and we're losing a lot of games we shouldn't lose. And it's on me. It's on Dame. It's on the bench. Like, Pacers bench outplayed our bench. Like, called out everyone. Like, he kind of, pretty much the coaches were the only thing he didn't not mention. And it was kind of refreshing. Not that he was blaming everyone and not him. He put it on himself as well. But was saying, us as a team, we have championship aspirations. And as a team, we need to be better. Yeah. And now you're playing against the team that you just said that about. So I think the Bucks should come out swinging. Pacers are just a fun team to watch. Yeah, they're they're so awesome. Fun. Halliburton yeah, well, and, is a star in the making. And, He's incredible. Yeah. And I really wish, like, Giannis just doesn't fully embrace being the face of the league. I feel like to a degree, he's also in a small market, so it's kind of tough. But like, I love that. Like, I I love that the mindset. Like, and it wasn't even a slight against the Pacers. No, it's like you like we have three. Like, we have myself, Giannis, first ballot Hall of Famer, mm-hmm. Dame, likely first ballot Hall of Famer, guaranteed Hall of Fame, yeah. and then Brooke Lopez, who like you could make an argument for of he's going to be on the ballot and he might get in. Mm-hmm. But like, we have a lot of talent on this team. This is a young up and coming team. We should be more competitive. We should probably win that game. Yeah. And takes the responsibility for it. And, like, also calls out his teammates of, like, dude, like, we all have to play better. And that's exactly, like, what the leader of your team should be doing. Mm-hmm. And it just, I love it so much. So. Yeah. Quiet confidence. Strong leader. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. And just so fun to watch. Most athletic yeah. dude in the league by far. And he's seven oh, feet yeah. tall. Like, <laughs> so freaking crazy. I, yeah. <laughs> and he's just a funny dude. I, a recent press conference, he was like, uh, so-and-so are like combined for 69 points. Oh, 69. I like that number. <laughs> right. He's just, he's just a goof. I really want to see him and Jokic team up at some point in their career. I don't. No. <laughs> Unless it's in Portland. Yeah. <laughs> I know it would like I'd be okay. imbalance the league a little bit. I'd be okay like, with it in the Eastern Conference. I no, it's okay. they used to have like <laughs> such similar amazing personalities, and every All Star game they play so well off of each other. Yeah. I would love to see it because I feel like Giannis is outgoing, goofy, and Jokic is incredibly introverted, goofy. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like yeah, they would just ricochet off of each other. They definitely like. I hope if Giannis winds up being. An all-star captain, Jokic doesn't get it, so that Giannis can draft Jokic. Because them being on the same all-star team I think would be a lot of fun. This year they're going back to East-West. Are they? Teams yeah. Yeah. Damn it! <laughs> but, I kind of look forward to that. Yeah, I mean, watching the, the East, East absolutely get destroyed. 
And I mean, now the East isn't like, the East is definitely it's still better. worse. Yeah. But there are a lot of really good players from the East now. That... I feel like they always wanted it to be East-West, and they just couldn't the last <laughs> few years. the East was just so bad. <laughs> Yeah. Now time for some NFL postseason predictions version two. Like we said, we got four weeks left in the season. The Dolphins, Titans, and the Giants Packers all have their fifth remaining game of the season tonight, which is uh, starting here very soon. Um, but we're going to give you our predictions because it's a close race. And we'll start with the NFC. And here in the NFC, I mean, you got... Niners, Cowboys, Lions, Buccaneers as your division leaders. Wild card is Eagles, Vikings, Packers. And then in the hunt, Rams, Seahawks, Falcons, Saints. And it is a tight race. If the Packers win tonight, they will take a full game lead over everybody in the hunt, and which will help them out a lot. Um, Niners, Cowboys, and Eagles all have the exact same record. Um, Cowboys currently hold division over the Eagles due to in-conference record, and then the Niners hold the tiebreaker over Cowboys and Eagles because they've beaten them. Um, Niners pretty much have a clear path to the one seed at this point, unless they blow up here at the end of the season. Right. But <clears throat> a lot of fun here down the stretch. Very competitive, very excited for it. And, Micah, we'll start with you. What are your predictions? Uh, I'm predicting Niners to secure the yeah. conference. Like. <laughs> They should. The way the Eagles have played the last couple games um, hasn't been fantastic, and the 49ers have beaten the Eagles, so they have uh, yeah, tiebreaker yeah. on them. Yeah. They should get it. Uh, I do think that the Eagles still should be second. Uh, and then I've got Lions uh, winning their conference and the Falcons uh, winning it. I personally think they have the easiest remaining schedule uh, with the Panthers, the Colts, the Bears, and New Orleans. Mm -hmm. uh, the Buccaneers and the Saints, I feel like, just both have harder schedules. I do think it's funny that at the beginning of the season, I picked the <laughs> Buccaneers to win the division right. with six wins. Kind of because it was a joke. And I was like, ah, this is my team I'm going to root for, and they're going to do it. And I'm the only one out of the three that doesn't have them winning it now. <laughs> also, spoiler alert. You bet on the Saints in your bet to win. <laughs> like, you first picked the Bucks. In this segment, you're saying the Falcons. And in your bet, you're saying the Saints. I can... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I think the Saints will beat the Giants. And I think the Falcons will beat the Panthers. And then... Uh, and the the, they can't will... both be with division winners, though. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> your bet was you did a parlay of division winners and you picked the Saints to win the division. Oh, I meant to do the Falcons. <laughs> That was a mistake on my part. Whoops. Uh, That's we'll, awesome. we'll fix that in post. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well. Uh, but then in the wild card games, I've got Cowboys, Packers, and Vikings. Uh, Packers are just looking really good right now. Uh, oh, where's the. Back to back. Uh, and they have an incredibly easy schedule they, coming up. They have the easiest remaining schedule in the NFL because not a single team they're playing is over 500. <laughs> yeah, so Packers, I think, should win out with how they've been playing recently and what the rest of their schedule is. So I think they should make it in. Uh, Cowboys, I mean, already have an incredible record. They're just in the same division as the Niners. So that just... Eagles. Eagles, yeah, my bad. Uh, <laughs> which is just a rough place to be. And then... Uh, Last one. And then Vikings. I don't know. There's there's so many teams that could make it in yeah. at the end. But they've got a like, pretty hard schedule, but have a good standing where they're at right now. So if they can just kind of hold on, win a couple games, I think they should stay in. Yeah. 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 For mine, I have more or less the exact same standing. Um, the only things I have swapping is I actually have the Packers taking over the division lead on the Lions. Um, the Lions, their final four games is Denver, Minnesota, Dallas, Minnesota. And I, don't, I see them losing to Denver. I see them losing to Dallas. And then Minnesota's kind of frisky, so you never know what can happen. <laughs> and so I think that's just that is a really tough four games for Detroit. Um, whereas the Packers, and they have five games left to play the Giants tonight, which, please God, yeah. let them beat the fucking Giants, I swear to God. Uh, but then after that, again, like Mike was saying, Buccaneers, Panthers, Vikings, Bears, like, 
with how the Packers are playing, they should win out, in which case the Packers would have 11 wins on the season. And if the if Detroit drops to even two games, Packers take that spot. So I think I think the Packers can do it. Um, Atlanta Falcons, I agree with Micah. I think of the NFC South teams, they have the easiest schedule remaining. I see the Buccaneers losing to the Packers, to the Jaguars, and then who knows, maybe even to the Saints, because again, the Saints are kind of frisky. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Saints... Yeah, they suck. Uh, <laughs> and then I also have the Rams instead of the Vikings. Um, in terms of remaining schedule, I honestly think I see the Vikings maybe losing out. Maybe they take a game against Detroit, but I think they're going to lose to Cincinnati with how Cincinnati's playing. Detroit will beat them in at least one game. And honestly, for the teams that are currently in the hunt, and then even the uh, Vikings sitting at 7-6, and six, if you lose two or three of these games, you're not getting in. Right. And I see the Vikings at least dropping to probably three, to be perfectly honest. Whereas the Rams, the only difficult game they have left is against the Niners. So if the Rams are able to win three games, I see them being in easily as that three spot at nine and eight. So that's mine. Yeah, I like it. Uh, as you can see, I like your top two picks. <laughs> we even gave them the same record. Um, so 49ers have tiebreaker over Eagles in this scenario. And um, I Eagle, think that... The Eagles schedule is so cush. <laughs> Eagles, yeah. Th- they just went through a six-game gauntlet. This is earned. Yeah. But it is super easy schedule to close it out. And then the 49ers, their hardest opponent is the Ravens. And... This season, historically, uh, the Ravens have been at their worst against top-tier defenses, Mm -hmm. which San Francisco pretty much boasts that. So, a top-tier defense with a more than competent offense should be able to pull that win out and secure the one seed. I have the Lions doing uh, pretty well as well to finish out the season. Um, Losing to the Broncos, and I don't remember how I picked the other games. But enough to secure the that third would, seed. That'd be, they currently have nine wins, so that'd be they lose to the Broncos and win the rest of the three. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, the Cowboys, uh, pretty okay schedule here out. Um, I think that they're going to do fairly well. Um, it's it's not easy, but <laughs> no, it's but they're very good. So <laughs> they're very good, and also like to get the five seed in the NFC is not going to be hard. I have them finishing yeah. at 12 and five, but they don't need to. Yeah. I think that they would have tiebreaker if they were nine and eight. Yeah. So that's fine. Buccaneers. I have as the winner of that crappy division. Um, just no real, like uh, I, I have them beating the Packers here, which is where uh, sort of my Packers dropping a little bit uh, comes from. <laughs> And, um, sorry, buddy. <laughs> Can't wait for Jordan Love to drop 60 on those goddamn bastards. <laughs> I just, I have them as like one of those teams that kind of just randomly shows up to games like more than they should. And if they do that twice, then they make playoffs on tiebreaker. Um, my first one out, which isn't pictured here is the Rams. Also at nine and eight. So like you, Evan, I do think that the Rams have a good chance at playoffs, but in this scenario, they lose out on tiebreaker to the Vikings and the Packers. So what three games do you picture the Vikings winning? Uh, I have them <laughs> winning Cincinnati, Green Bay, and one in one versus Detroit. Even after hanging mere three points against the Raiders? Yep, they won. <laughs> they won. <laughs> All right. I just, I'm just probing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Got to ask them hard hitting questions here. <laughs> all right, well, that's the NFC, and for the most part, I feel like we pretty much all agree. Like mm-hmm. it's the NFC; it's it's a small, it's a smaller pool of teams mm-hmm. to select from versus the AFC, which pff, good freaking luck correctly right. picking this. Yeah. Um, Starting out divisions, uh, Ravens currently lead at 10-3, and three, followed by the Dolphins, Chiefs, Jaguars. Um, Chiefs have a uh, tiebreaker over Jaguars by conference record right now. Wild card is Browns, Steelers, and the Colts. Um, Steelers have it over division, I think, against the Colts. And then in the hunt, you got Texans, Broncos, Bengals, Bills, Man. all at 7-6. and six, Look at that Which in the, the Colts and the Steelers are... Also seven and six. It's insane. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six teams, all the exact same record, and the Steelers and Colts are only in because of tiebreakers. It is a cluster in the AFC. But uh, Micah, what you got? <laughs> uh, 
I've got the Dolphins <laughs> winning it, taking it. Uh, As they, you should. They have a very tough schedule ahead. They're uh, yeah, it's brutal. <laughs> playing the Jets tonight. Uh, or, no, Titans tonight. And then we'll face the Jets next week. Yeah. Should be. Should be two easy wins. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then it's Cowboys, Ravens, and Bills. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's tough, tough three. But I'm thinking Ravens are very inconsistent. Yeah. And who knows when they're going to drop a game. I have Miami winning that game. And as long as we beat Baltimore and win either Dallas or Bills, and I think we should beat the Bills, I don't feel that bad against Dallas either. Especially at home. Yeah. Like, it feels way too much to say we're going to win out. Like, I feel like more than likely we'll, we'll lose one. one. Yeah. Maybe two, but as long as we can beat Baltimore, I think we should still take this. Uh, and then next up, Baltimore. Followed by Kansas City. They've dropped a few games, but I don't see any way that Broncos overtake them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then Jags, I think, should hold out in their uh, standings. And then making the wild card teams, I've got the Browns because they already have eight and five already and don't have too hard of a schedule uh, coming up. Bears, Texans, Jets, and Bengals. Yeah. Like, who knows what the Bengals can do with Jake Browning, but. The rest of the games. Yeah. <laughs> like, they should kind of win out here. Especially with Joe Flacco. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then uh, Colts additionally have a pretty easy schedule mm-hmm. against the Steelers, who have been playing horribly, like Jonathan mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, Falcons, Raiders, and Texans. Uh, I do need the Falcons to win that game, but then they can win the other <laughs> one. Uh, and then uh, ending it off with the Broncos, who have been playing really, really well lately yeah. and don't have too difficult have of a, a schedule. schedule like, the, Ly- the Lions are the hardest. Yeah, Lions are the yeah. hardest game. And then Patriots, Chargers, who we already beat, and Raiders. Who are, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have uh, definitely agree with all the division winners. I actually have the Chiefs topping Ooh. out um, because they did beat the Dolphins earlier, so they would have tiebreaker and... The Chiefs' schedule, they probably have the easiest remaining schedule of all these teams. Patriots, Raiders, Bengals, Chargers. It's not The bad. only yeah. competition there is the Bengals, and they're they're at home. They're in Kansas City. So, yeah. realistically, the Chiefs can win out, which would put them at 12 wins. Um, and it's not really anything against the Dolphins or the Ravens. They just both have difficult schedules mm-hmm. to the end of the year. We already covered mm-hmm. the Dolphins, but the Ravens don't have to play the Jaguars, the 49ers, the Dolphins, and then the Steelers. The only easy game there is the Steelers. Yeah. And yeah. even then, the Steelers, from week to week, they can suddenly <laughs> become decent at football. So it's it's tough. So I have the Dolphins then coming in second, purely because of tiebreaker. Um, Baltimore Ravens kind of struggling here at the end of the season. Um, going eleven and six, they have tiebreaker of the Jaguars at eleven and six. Browns also going eleven and six because they have an easy schedule as well coming in at the first wild card. I will caveat this: I currently have it then be Broncos Colts. I am thinking that because it looks like C.J. Stroud might be out for a little bit. Which, if that's the case, the Texans I think will just falter. I mean, without C.J. Stroud, the Texans are doing nothing. If C.J. Stroud is healthy, I could see a possibility of the Texans then. Breaking into this, in which case they would likely wind up being the six. Broncos are dropped to the seven. Mm-hmm. Colts would be out because of tiebreaker there. Um, but for now, based on the idea that CJ Stroud would be out, I say Broncos got six. They would have tiebreaker over the Colts, who would come in at seven, which would create an absolutely chaotic AFC side of the bracket for the NFL postseason. Um, the Colts. The Colts are the definition of uh, what the word I've been using, which is uh, frisky. Uh, <laughs> um, Gardner Minshew looks like a freaking dog. There, Michael Pittman's been showing out. Jonathan Taylor is back. Um, the Colts look pretty damn solid, honestly. And then why? <laughs> and the Broncos um, look good. However, the Broncos definitely have moments of looking like or fans going what the fuck are you guys doing? And hopefully they don't have too many of those moments. Um, I think, again, with their schedule, like Michael was saying, Broncos realistically can win out. I do think they'll take that game against the Lions because the Lions have been faltering. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, for me, I have the Dolphins topping it as well. Hell yeah. Um, although, unlike you, I have them losing that game against the Ravens. That I have that as their only loss the rest of the year. 
And thank goodness that it's their only loss because they would be third in this scenario <laughs> otherwise, um, based on tiebreakers and how it would all turn out. Um, so Miami Dolphins finishing 13 and four top in the division, the Chiefs taking it over the Ravens by tiebreaker with the Chiefs uh, winning out themselves, yeah. <laughs> like we said, easy yeah. schedule. Ravens have a tough one. I have them dropping two games if you're paying attention to like current standings versus uh, I'm dropping what three, I so. <laughs> so I have them losing to San Francisco. Uh, like I said earlier, top defenses are a real problem for them. And I actually have them losing in week 18 to Pittsburgh. Wow. Yeah, a little bit kind of insane, but... <laughs> they be frisky. <laughs> Pittsburgh be frisky. frisky. Pits- <laughs> Pittsburgh um, would not mind playing spoiler, and there's a good chance, in fact, I have it sort of playing out, where they are fighting for their playoff lives, and it matters a lot to them. Yeah. Um, Denver Broncos, I have winning out, actually, um, and doing so takes the uh, tiebreaker over the the Cleveland Browns, um, and then the Texans. I am assuming Stroud will be healthy. Steelers was first one out, <laughs> which is surprising because, um, like, you look at the next couple of teams up, and it's the Colts and the Bills, also both at nine and eight in my scenario. And based on the way that the Steelers have played to this point in the season, being tied with the Colts and the Bills gives them tiebreaker. Um, which will just be one hell of a finish to the season, I think. Um, although it's my it gives them tiebreaker <laughs> magic to get back into the playoffs. <laughs> it, it gives them tiebreaker for the eight seed, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so disappointing finish to the year for the Bills. I think a lot of us had them missing playoffs, and that is all of us did. Yeah, all of us did. <laughs> I mean, and if they miss, bye bye Sean McDermott. Probably, yeah. Like, the expectation for the Bills at this point with Josh Allen, with Stephon Diggs, is you make the postseason. Realistically, I think every single one of us, except for Micah, picked the Bills to win the AFC East this year. And even Micah, I think, only picked the Dolphins to have, like, one more win than the Bills. Yeah. And so, like, you were picking them close. The Bills have just not been themselves this year. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I think Sean McDermott. They've got a tough schedule to close it. So, it's going to be. They might have the top Dallas, Chargers, Patriots, Miami. They're definitely Dallas I, and Miami are really hard. Yeah, I think and then Chargers and New England can take a game. Probably not, but yeah, two losses loses them. Yeah, the you have playoffs. If, if so. you're an in the hunt or wildcard team at this point, you have to get three wins. Yeah, it's not you don't have a choice. Non-negotiable. In fact, I predicted in our last outro that a couple of ten and seven teams would miss playoffs. It didn't turn out that way in my predictions, but I could see that happening. I could see the Bills missing with ten and seven. Yeah, and have the Texans having tiebreaker over them. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, while we're here, little mini toast to the Broncos because holy shit, they started this year one in five with losses to the Raiders, Commanders, Dolphins, which is excusable except it's 70 to two or to 20, <laughs> the Jets. Like, you lost to four terrible, terrible teams, and now it would be a disappointment for you to miss playoffs. Like, that's an insane turnaround. It will be a 30 for 30 if they make it happen. Won't be a 30 for 30 because the Packers are going to take the division doing the exact same shit. <laughs> <laughs> you did, you started 1-5? and 2-4, uh, and four, I think. Which you uh, much you lost 70-20 to 20 in a game in those first six games? You lost 70-20 to 20 against the Dolphins, dude. Like... <laughs> Yeah, but it's the best offense in the league. <laughs> like coming into playoffs, being f- one we and lost five, to you fuckers. True, <laughs> but being one and five and making playoffs has happened three times in NFL history, and to do it like against teams that like where most of your losses come against teams that are under five hundred is spectacular. Yeah, but no one likes Russell Wilson. So. <laughs> That's not <a> true. <laughs> Shifting over to NBA Power Rankings, we'll get through this quickly. There's pretty minimal movement. I was kind of joking with Jonathan earlier. Kind of our top six, roughly, are like kind of generally the same. Besides Micah. Yeah, I threw the Lakers up there. <laughs> you really uh, did. But then, like, all of our bottom, like, ten are pretty much the, like, exact same teams. <laughs> so... 
pretty minimal movement for the most part. Um, again, I think all of us had the Lakers being our biggest riser. Micah rose them the most. Yeah. Up 11 spots. Jonathan Not just up, up 11. Up 11 to third. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which makes the jump even like more dramatic. Yeah. So, uh, Micah, we'll start with you on that. And then if you also want to mention your uh, biggest faller during yeah. the same span. I mean, I already toasted the Lakers. I won't speak too much on them. Uh, like, I will say, I think they're better than the Pacers based on how they just played. And the Pacers have been doing incredible. But Lakers never let the Pacers go on, like, a significant run in that game. Like, pretty much always held the lead pretty strong. The Magic have dropped a few games. The Bucks have dropped a few games that they shouldn't have lost. Um, a lot of, like, Nuggets have not been playing that great. Mm-hmm. Like, losing a lot. I think they're on a three-game losing streak right now. And then there's a lot of other teams in there that are just like can be great one day and terrible the next, like the yeah. Cavs and the Kings and the Suns and the Mavs. Like, like Lakers are playing well enough, consistently enough now mm-hmm. that I think that they are one of the most dangerous teams in the league. So I kind of think they deserve to be up there. I also understand that next week they could look terrible and I'd be like, yeah, that was an overreaction, <laughs> but. As of now, I like where they are. Uh, I also had the Timberwolves overtaking the Celtics because Timberwolves are looking really good. Yeah. And they're winning a lot more and more consistently than the Celtics are. Uh, falling a lot was he... Uh, Adebayo's been out quite a bit. Yeah. So yeah, it's tough. you would expect to lose those games kind of with how they're playing. And then all the other teams are just middling and weird. I just want consistency from everyone between <laughs> 9 and yeah, 20. Right. That's I mean, all I want. <laughs> we're, we're 100% as we, the season goes on. Again, like our bottom 10 are roughly going to stay the same. Like there should be like one or two spot movement per week for them. Yeah. Top 10 will roughly settle in likely. But then 11 through 19 is just going to be a cluster, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is how it's going to go. Um, to your point with the Lakers, like... Maybe I'm being too hesitant on them. I still just feel like at the end of last season, what we saw was that age effect hit a lot of their team where like as the season went on, they just started to get tired. They and played they just, the best at the end of the season. They were uh, bad all season and ago. then they went on okay. a run. <laughs> but I, I just – having faith in the Lakers is still just so hard for me. Just, I, I get that. Yeah, and like it, one it, injury destroys them. One injury destroys them. And then the other thing is like – you have guys like D'Lo and AD who, like, LeBron is the only guy on that team who consistently night in and night out gives you, like, a good performance. AD will have one game where he's, like, one of the best centers in the NBA. The next game, he'll be mediocre. D'Angelo Russell will have games where, like, he is a very solid point guard. And the next day, he won't score a point for you playing for 32 minutes. So it's just... And I know that, like, over the past couple weeks, they've solidified a little bit and been more consistent. I still, like, that still just bothers me that I know they have that potential. And if they settle in, I'll absolutely give them their flowers and raise them higher. I just, I can't feel like I can put them over anybody else in my top eight right now, even after winning in season. I still think, to a degree, not that people weren't trying in in season, I still think, like, next year, I think in season will be an even bigger deal and people will come like teams will come out I think even stronger of like you know what we want to win this thing especially since apparently freaking Giannis didn't even realize that you win money (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome yeah no they interviewed him after they lost to the Pacers and he was like wait you win cash for winning the (laughs) in-season tournament and the reporter was like yeah Giannis like you would win a million dollars if you won the in-season yeah 500,000 but when the in-season and he was like well, if it's only five hundred thousand, no, no, Yasser's right. He was, he was like, damn. <laughs> so, I think next year, like, there was probably some hesitancy coming into the season of like, I think players not wanting to like the in season tournament. So it wasn't even a lack of effort. It was just more like, oh, man, the in season tournament. Eh. <laughs> and, I know, like, I kind of that's what I was expecting, and I do see that to an extent. But I think making all of the pool play. Right, like count towards the regular season. Like I don't think any team didn't show up for the games that didn't count for their regular season record. I mean, like, like no, Pacers but, and Bucks like played hard. Yeah, and just 
Pacers beat I mean, them. Every, sure. Especially the bracket. Every single game, the winner was celebrating. Yeah. More than they would for a regular season game. Mm-hmm. And maybe, but you could argue less than they would for a postseason win. Oh, yeah, for but, sure. And they should. But, but like, <laughs> that's a win in and of itself, that they're celebrating more than a regular season win. Yeah. yeah. I think the end season tournament got lucky that the Pacers made it to the finals because it shows that a scrappy young team can, like, yeah, for sure. outperform and do that. And a very good team won it, showing that, yeah, even though we're old and very rich, we don't care. We want to win because we're competitive. Yeah. Like, I feel like that was the best case scenario. And unfortunately, it looks good that LA wins, which is annoying, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. And my biggest faller I had is the Knicks. I don't know if I really have a good reason for them being the biggest faller. More just they're in the midst of the cluster, and yeah. <laughs> they were the most unfortunate of the cluster this past week. So that just happens. There we go. <laughs> and then uh, the Spurs I had dropping below the Wizards. They're at the bottom of the chip pile because uh, the Spurs have currently not won a game in. Very, very long very time. Long. <laughs> yeah, they, they beat the Suns twice, and then the Spurs went, that's all, folks. <laughs> I saw a stat. I don't remember how many games it was, but like the combined win total of a certain period of time for the Wizards, Spurs, and Pistons is one and some horrible number. Yeah. <laughs> and the one win was Wizards beating the Pistons. <laughs> it's just, all three of them are so bad right now. Hey, dude, it scares me so bad, though, because this is so eerily similar to the Spurs drafting David Robinson and still being dog shit the next year and then getting Duncan. And it's like, as much as Pop deserves the world, being a fan of another Western Conference team, it's like, please, God, don't let it happen again. <laughs> I don't, I, we don't need another Spurs dynasty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, for me, biggest dresser, Lakers, like we said. Yeah. Um like, not a lot of other huge drags. There's no one else above three spots. Yeah. Kind of a, a mostly mundane week. Biggest fallers were the Nuggets who, like, if there was any argument, because I heard a lot of people saying, oh, you want to be eliminated from the in-season tournament because then you face the easier teams in your, like, two makeup games. Uh, if you said that, look at the Nuggets <laughs> who dropped two games <laughs> against easy opponents in their makeup games this last week. It was really bad. Um, <laughs> secondly, uh, I had the Heat dropping four spots, um, which I'll dwell on a little bit longer than you did. Uh, they, like you said, injury bugs, um, and also like they're dropping far. I don't think it's fully their fault. They've also had a bit of a tough schedule recently. The Knicks, the Nets, the Bucks, the Pacers, and the Cavs were their most recent losses. Those are not easy teams. In fact. I think we unanimously have all of those teams ranked above the Heat. So yeah. those are all games that we said they should have lost, but they just kind of stacked up on them. Um, so Heat have a good chance of coming back, but they do need to correct themselves because they're currently at risk of not even making the play-in tournament, which yeah. would be a travesty. Yeah. All right, now on the trivia, Mike is back. So trivia is back. And uh, really quick, quick round of applause to Jonathan. Last time we did trivia, he got on the board, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Wait, 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 wait. Last episode, this said Micah had zero, Jonathan had an eight, and Evan had three. What happened? Shut the hell up. Uh, <laughs> so Micah and Jonathan, Micah has three, Jonathan has one. Um, I'm running this week, and this week we are doing... Top 20 all-time NFL passing leaders. Ah. <laughs> so this will, be, this will be going back to the grid style that I Thanks, have been Evan. using. You'll be getting team logos as well as the number of passing yards they've had in their career. Cool. We will once again be assigning different points Point to down. each player. Um, I'll spoil one now. Uh, for example, uh, Tom Brady is a one-pointer because... <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Wait, we don't know what team he played for, though. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Oh. I will <laughs> clarify, because there are, of course, quarterbacks on here who have played for more than one team. The team logo that is assigned to them is the team that they accumulated the me- the majority of their passing yards with. Okay. okay. So whichever team they have more passing yards with versus the other, or of the three, that's the team they're being assigned to. Wait, okay. who goes first? 
Um, Flip a coin. We're going to get to that in a okay. sec. Okay. So uh, we'll be back and forth as per usual. One of you will kick it off. And uh, we'll also, just because we're short on time and I personally feel like this is a fairly simple list, <laughs> um, we'll be giving you five strikes. Okay. So if you get five strikes, you're out. And then okay. it will come down to who scored the most points. Um, we are going to flip a coin really quick. Um, Jonathan, heads or tails? Heads. I'm a sucker. Dang! And his tails. Tails uh, and fails. Mike, I am assuming you would like to go first? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, here is the board. All right. Um, let's go. So these are in order, right? Yeah, so yeah, top left is the highest, and then bottom right is the lowest passing yards of these top 20. Okay. Let's see. Interesting. Hmm. Let's go with And if there's a duplicate you're guessing, just tell me like the yards number. Okay. So you're guessing. Could I pull this up on my own? Or are there answers that would I, I would see? Uh, just so I'm not leaning over this whole time. I guess that works too. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we're just gonna go. Uh, let, Patriots, Tom Brady. It, no. What? <laughs> no. What? I was, gonna do this. I was gonna be smart about this. And oh, make this you beautiful man! As I go along, you beautiful man. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, over to you. Mike has got to one point. There are insurmountable. There are thirty-three points more available on this board, or left available on the board. <sighs> I want to go with. <laughs> I want to go for a higher pointer. The <laughs> Titans, Vikings, Chargers, those seem ridiculous. Thank you for Chargers' higher number is only a plus one and the lower number is a plus three because that gives me a huge hint as to which one I know. <laughs> um, I think I'll start out with a two pointer. Do I really think that he's that high already? Which one is it? <laughs> I'll go for Seahawks, because I think that I know it, and I think Michael will take it. And it's Russell Wilson. Yes, it is. Cool. It's not Matt Hasselbeck. <laughs> That's why I assigned it two points, is because you, yeah. could, you could think that it might be Hasselbeck. I was a little scared of that one, but... All right. Micah. All right. Over uh... to you. Let's do uh, Steelers as Big Ben. Yes, it is. It has to be. <laughs> yep. Pretty easy one. Good call out, Micah. Ties nice it work. up. <laughs> uh, let's... I feel like he has to be by this point in his career. Um, I'm going to go for the Ravens is Joe Flacco. Yes, it is. Cool. Because <laughs> there's no other Raven that, like, Lamar Jackson, but I don't but think he's that far. Yet. Yeah. Oh, I will also, I guess I can clarify this as well. For the handful of active players that are on this list, this is correct as of today. Oh, Yardage wise. Cool. So, right. players like Flacco and Russ. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, the first Green Bay is Rodgers. That is incorrect. Ah, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> you're about to trade Just in case he here. doesn't know the first one, I'm going to go for the second <laughs> one is Rodgers. Yes, that is correct. Aaron Rodgers sitting at 59,000. Hey, that's uh, the wrong person. Oh, I'll take it. There you go. All right. Um... I swear to God, Mike, if you don't know the other package. <laughs> I mean, it better be far, right? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it could have been star. You don't All know. right. And uh, after trading those slides, we are essentially now back to where we were a couple of guesses ago. <laughs> I'm almost surprised that Bart Starr isn't on the list, but. I mean, he played during the age of. Of not passing. Run much. game, yeah. yeah. So. What other two All right, so now the, char have? the Chargers are the only team left with, with two players on the list. These higher point ones. 
The higher point ones are tough. They're hard. It's, hu- it's I hard. Like, because I have a guess for both the Bengals and the Vikings. I feel like the Vikings is wrong. I feel like it's not possible. I mean, send it, bro. No. <laughs> send it. Send it, dude. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go for the Dolphins. Uh, Dan Marino. Yes. <laughs> Just wanted that one. Yeah. That's, a, that's <laughs> an easy one. It's literally the only Dolphins quarterback who could even potentially be on this list. So. Yeah. Um, let's do... That would be that one. Is the Giants Eli Manning? Nice. Yes, it is. It is Eli. All right, Micah, back to down by two. Jonathan. <laughs> Saints is Drew Brees. Yes. That's the guy's name. <laughs> so, I can see him. <laughs> All right. This, um, Still some fairly easy ones on the board. Yeah. It's the Falcons, Matt Ryan. Yes, it is. Nice. Matty Ice at 62,000. All right, Micah, bringing it back with him, too. There's a consistent theme happening here. <laughs> <laughs> the. I don't want Micah to take my team. The Broncos is LA. Yes, it is. 51,000. <laughs> Again, the only Broncos quarterback that really could be on this list. Kind of. <laughs> uh, the Lions' Jared Goff? No. Not even close. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the... <laughs> That's awesome. The uh, Colts is the other Bronco, Peyton Manning. He's a, he's a, he's a Colt, so come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I know the most Chargers one. I feel like there's a possibility that it's you know, just just because I need the points, we're gonna say the second Chargers, uh, Philip Rivers. Incorrect. All right. so First Chargers is Philip Rivers. Yeah, <laughs> I figured. I like, yeah, <laughs> had to take the shot though. You did. Yeah. Uh, okay. I put my this puts my guy in a tough spot. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, I'll see six, seven, I like this. this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you do. All right. I feel like. Ooh, I, I feel like you could get the Lions if you got more. Well, there's a guy that I'm pretty sure is on here. I'll be honest, I can't tell which team it is. <laughs> oh, there's no way that would be. Uh, did he play on the Lions? Shit. I'll be nice to you because you're down by five. If you just throw a, a name and it's on this list, I will. <laughs> Do you accept that, Jonathan? You're you're competing. He's not going to get any of the three pointers, so he's not going to catch you. <laughs> All right, and no, I, I'll I'll try to do it the right way. Uh, I, I just don't know who the answers are. I'm a little scared to offer that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, you know better than me, Evan. But <laughs> I don't want, it's the Lions. Uh, I should make sure he hasn't been said yet. Okay, I think he's on there. Kirk Cousins? No. Nah, fuck. <laughs> Lions is Matthew Stafford. Yes, it is. Oh. oh, that makes sense. The other old white guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the only good Lions quarterback in franchise history, which is, like, I wouldn't have thought that he was that high on the all-time passing list, but he's also the only Lion. So. I was played with Calvin Johnson for a long time, so. Yeah. It's a Vikings Kirk Cousins? <clears throat> No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't have been three points if it was, but yeah. it was also my really only guess for the Vikings. Yeah. All right, so Micah has four strikes. <laughs> All right, Jonathan doesn't have any. I don't think. No, I have none yet. About to get, but some. I might get five in a row. Yeah, we're, we've whittled it down to the difficult, difficult categories here. Oh. I 
feel like the Titan's name is on the tip of my tongue, but. Because there's no way it would be Tannehill. It wouldn't be three points. And there's also no way he's that high. Um, and I don't think he played for his majority with any of these other teams. Um, I got five strikes. Tannehill for Titans. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was going to be my guess. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. Got you, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. And and let's Mike pull something out of the ether here. I... <laughs> yeah. Uh... See if I... All right. Give me a sec here. Yep. Uh, we're gonna go with. Just an additional fun hint. Uh, only one player left on this list has played since 2010. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that still fits my Bengals. <laughs> the Titans fits magic? No. <laughs> Is that five strikes? That's five yeah. strikes. So cool. if you, I'll give you two more guesses if you want to try and just expand the lead if you want, Jonathan. But Bengals is Andy Dalton. No, it is not. <laughs> Which team had the guy since 2010? And the Bengals. <laughs> <laughs> so he's played since 2010. It doesn't necessarily mean he was on the Bengals. Okay. From 2010. And I can't confirm either way on that. But. <laughs> of course it was the Bengals. <laughs> <laughs> He retired with the thing. There's no way he would have the most yards with the Bengals, though. Who? Oh. <laughs> Just guess. Carson Palmer? It is Carson Palmer. No, uh, oh. he's not the Cardinals? No, because he, he played out like the very end of his career. Wow. Yeah. No. And then I've got nothing. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay. The remaining players on the list, the Titans player... Or the Oilers was Warren Moon at 49,000. I wouldn't have gotten that. <laughs> nope, never heard of him. The Vikings at 47,000 was Fran Tarkenton. And oh, I've, I've heard that name. He's yeah. so old, he doesn't have a stat muse. <laughs> <laughs> the Jets was Vinny Testaverde. Again. I, sh- I also know that name, but would not have gotten it. Patriots. I'm surprised you didn't get this one on, so draw them. Drew Bledsoe. Oh! <laughs> And then the Chargers was Dan Fouts. Okay. So, yeah. All right. <laughs> Good game. Jonathan, getting his second point on the board there. Congrats. I had to, Thank you. I did too many NBA ones. I had to swing it back yeah, a little I bit. Get, I, get it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to make it one that I was like, Micah can get these. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. if, I, if I had tried harder on the threes instead of the ones, he probably would have like been more competitive, too. Yeah. I just didn't want him to take... All, All the, the ones, ones. <laughs> and then screw you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Well, now over to our final segment of the day so then we can then go watch some Monday Night Football. Yes. Sportsbook Showdown. Let's go to Dolphins. Micah, your first bet of the week. Uh, first bet of the week, I've got uh, all money line Browns, Packers, Cowboys, Eagles, Broncos winning. Uh, a couple of those were plus odds, but. To clarify, is that Packers next week or the tonight? Uh, next week. Okay. This is all, yeah, for next week. Uh, all of that is plus 2,231, and I put two units on it. Nice. I'm being super cruel to our audience because I'm <laughs> placing a bet for tonight, and there's no way we're posting this tonight. Uh, Monday Night Football Parlay, Titans plus 13.5, um, and that game to go under 46.5. I'm surprised that those lines are allowed to go with each other because to say that the um, like the gap in score will be less 
and the total score will be less feels like those are kind of along the same line of thinking. Yeah. yeah. But it gave me full odds for parlaying them. And then same thing in the opposite direction, uh, Packers to win by at least a touchdown and um, that game to go over 37 points. That's plus 864, two units. Sweet. For my first bet, uh, I'm doing a money line parlay. I'm picking the Broncos over the Lions, Panthers over the Falcons, Giants over the Saints, and that is netting me plus 1,705, putting a unit on it, uh, mainly because I'm betting on the Panthers and I'm not going to risk too many units. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But yeah. I still feel like the Panthers should be able to win more than one game, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you think. Uh, all right, Mike, back to you. Uh, this is on Tuesday's slate of NBA games. I've got the Suns beating the Warriors and the Kings beating the Clippers. Uh, Warriors have been playing horribly, mm-hmm. and if the Suns have at least... Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, which who knows. But if they do, they should easily win that game. Uh, Clippers have been hot recently. I think they're on a three-game winning streak, but Kings look to be healthy, so I think they should take it. I like it. John. Man, we both bet on a similar thing, Micah. We both had the Clippers losing. (laughs) (laughs) Although, mine, I was fishing for plus odds. I have the Clippers losing on the second night of a back-to-back against the Trailblazers. That's not happening. And then... Bold move. (laughs) Also, that's tonight. That's the first half of a back-to-back. I have them losing on the first half of a (laughs) back-to-back. Oh, man, I'm cruel to the uh, betters today. And then I have the Spurs uh, topping the Rockets. And uh, that's plus 2,749. Great for two legs, I think. But they are two tough legs. Yeah. Two units. We're all seeming this very well. We all did. First bet was NFL. Second bet was NBA. Um, I'm picking spreads again. Spread parlay. I'm taking Trailblazers plus 13 against the Clippers. Um, I don't think the Blazers will win, but I don't think they'll lose by more than 13. Uh, Timberwolves plus three against the Pelicans. I think the Pelicans will win that game, so I like that. Mavericks minus two against the Grizzlies. I feel like the Mavericks should blow out the Grizzlies, so I like that one. Kind of is out, but I still think they should. Yeah, win. and then Celtics minus one and a half against the Lakers. That's probably the most competitive game out of this. Bunch. Bunch, but I still like the Celtics in that game. Yeah. That's netting me plus 1,270, putting two units down on it. Nice. Uh, I messed up on this <laughs> bet. Uh, division winners, I've got Dolphins, Ravens, Jags, Chiefs, Eagles, Lions, and 49ers. Uh, I put Saints. It was supposed to be Falcons. Uh, Falcons have... You might get better odds for Falcons, too. Uh, Falcons is worse odds. Really? Falcons was like plus 140. Saints is plus 200. Gotcha. So, after that correction, the odds would probably be around 535, I'm going to say. And I put one unit on that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fix it in post. Uh, maybe. For my uh, third bet of the week, I went a similar route, division winners, and also went majority, like currently favored. Um, So a lot of minus odds make up for a decent plus. Uh, I've got Dolphins, Ravens, Jags, Chiefs, Eagles, Lions, Bucks, and 49ers. Main difference there being Buccaneers, not the Saints or Falcons. (laughs) And that is a plus 540, one unit. I like it. For my final bet, uh, I'm doing my... Total points parlay. I just, they're so much fun. Uh, Chargers, Raiders, I'm going under 34. Um, yeah. Justin Herbert's out, and the Raiders suck on offense, so like that one. Broncos, Lions, over 46 and a half. Both decent powered offenses, especially on the Lions when they get rolling. And then Chiefs, Patriots, under 37 and a half. Again, Patriots' offense is horrible, but their defense is phenomenal, and the Chiefs' offense kind of sucks right now. So I like that one. Taking it at a plus 595, two units on that. <laughs> Cool. And that'll do it for this week's episode. Uh, if you're enjoying the comment, please leave a like. Uh, Jonathan has promised if we hit 10 likes, he will actually get a video out within 48 hours of us recording it. So yep. just waiting to hit that 10 like mark. Uh, also, hit that subscribe button so that you actually see our content. And have a comment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Leave a comment. Yeah. Let us know what we're doing wrong, what we're doing right. Probably as, more what we're doing wrong. But, as they know. say, subscribe, like, comment. Do all the things. Hit all the buttons yeah. on YouTube. There's, uh, a, there's it. a bell or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Click here. <laughs> yeah, up in this uh, this one corner. We're, we're pointing to right now. And uh, <laughs> since he is back on the pod this week, Micah, take us away. Uh, Miami's going to miss playoffs. Uh, uh, Miami Heat. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Heat. Okay. Heat. Okay. Heat. Okay. Heat. Okay. Heat. Okay. Heat. <laughs> Doing like one of those moves that's picking them to uh, win the AFC and then... <laughs>